Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video is about a really, really rare machine. We only got three of them left. It's the Danish built machine called the James. It's from 1983 and we got three left. And recently I got one of them working. So this video will be about that one machine. But before we get started, will you please do me the huge favor of subscribing to my channel, liking this video and get all of your friends to do the same. That would make me so happy. And while you do that, I will run the intro. Yeah! The James computer is yet another of the Danish built ZED based computers from the early to mid 1980s. All these computers were much similar in design. And even though they were more or less all based on the reference design from Psylocke, there were still room for individual design choices, which the James computer is a really good example of. The machine has two whole Psylocke Z80A processors running at 4 MHz. The main processor had 64 KB of memory and between 3 and 8 KB of read-only memory, which would then be swapped into the main memory during boot. The secondary processor would then handle most of the machine's input and output functionality. It had 8 kilobytes of read-only memory for screen characters, between 2 and 8 kilobytes of working memory, 2 kilobytes of screen memory, 4 kilobytes of extra character memory, and finally 64 bytes for keyboard buffering. The monitor had 24 lines and 80 columns in standard text mode. It had several different ways of making graphics, with the largest resolution being 640 by 250 pixels but the most used method was to redefine a set of pseudo characters and use those in text mode. The system had a variety of options for connecting accessories. The machine both had a standard serial port and a parallel port for accessories such as printers, modems, digitizers and there was even a dedicated port for a light pen which could be used for several different graphical applications. The motherboard even had an expansion port, which could be used for one so-called Euro card, or you could purchase an extra cabinet, which allowed for adding several expansion cards. The storage consisted of two 800 kilobyte, five and a quarter inch floppy drives. Some rare models had a third three and a half inch drive added for even more storage. Most other Danish-built microcomputers of this time were targeted towards the educational sector where well, this one primarily was targeted towards private and small to medium businesses. The company behind the machine offered administration software in form of accounting, customer and warehouse management, all promised to comply with all the rules of the European communities, the predecessor to the European Union. Text processing, spreadsheet, databases and even communication software was also available. Although communication back then mostly consisted of using a terminal program and a modem to connect to a real computer and use that. There were several different services in Denmark. Banks, newspapers and telecommunication companies had various offerings and even a few bulletin board systems or BBSs were available. And if you were one of the lucky few, you could actually connect to a very early version of the internet using this bad boy. The system also offered a wide array of development languages such as BASIC, Pascal, Fortran, COBOL and APL but also the Danish developed Komal 80, which were more or less a requirement for any system back then, because this was a language the Danish educational sector had adopted. Hence, this was the language that most people were familiar with. The company behind the James computer was called Logic Design, a small rural company funded by three ham radio friends in the mid-1970s, originally designing and manufacturing equipment for ham operators and doing assembly work for some larger companies in the area. Ham Operators is a nickname given to enthusiasts who play with radio in a non-commercial setting. Many of these people are highly skilled individuals who build and or maintain their own equipment and a lot of the early computer enthusiasts came out of this subculture. During a seminar in Copenhagen, one of the founders of Logic Design had a conversation with a famous Danish software engineer who complained that hardly anybody made computers in Denmark. That sparked a series of thoughts that resulted in an adventure with 15 employees and hundreds of customers around the country. Currently, I don't know exactly how many computers were built, but hopefully I will uncover more information about that before I finish my book. And yes, you heard right. For those of you who do not know, I am currently writing a book about the first Danish microcomputer. This is not the James computer, 
but the James computer has still an interesting history, so I decided to include it as an honorable mention. If you think computer history is interesting, I would very much encourage you to go to thedanishcomet.com and pre-order the book. Link in the description down below. And finally, it is time for the part you all been waiting for. Let's see what this beautiful machine can do. I'll start by doing my traditional basic program. This time in Comal 80, which in this version doesn't need to be changed at all. The machine is running CPM, which means that with little effort I can get any existing program to run on this machine. But that's not fun. So what I did was that I looked around for software made specifically for this machine and I found a couple of floppies containing a few games that were distributed by Logic Design themselves. This is text mode games, but at least one of them uses the before mentioned feature about redesigning characters. And lo and behold, Komal works. The first two games are variations over the well-known snake game. The first one is called Miner. Here you have to lay out mines, which you do by just walking over the map. At the same time, you have to avoid trees and your own mines, because for some reason, those are equally dangerous and they will kill you. Furthermore, you get points by collecting the flags, and like in Snake, you don't get to take any breaks. Your player is constantly moving at a predefined pace. The other snake-like game is called Kilroy, and the idea is that the computer controls one or more snakes, and then you have to navigate through the same map and make sure you're the one who survived the longest. It's interesting to see how the limitations of the hardware made people innovate in regards to the rules of the game, but leaving the game engine itself more or less the same. The final game is the word puzzle Hangman in a Danish version, where the software developer played a bit around and tried to make some fancy effects using ASCII animations, but sadly, this program was most likely written for an older and slower CPM system, so the animations plays a bit too fast. But the game is fun to play anyway. As you can see here, I'm guessing on different letters, and by selecting some of the letters used most often in the Danish alphabet, I quickly figure out the word we are looking for, are kaffekanne, which is Danish for coffee pot. The only wrong letter I typed was B, which made the platform of the gallow appear. Let me just try to lose a game so you can see it's your up for real. And awkwardly enough, it actually took me a longer time to lose a game than to, to win the first one. And while we added the embarrassing things, um, during the production of this video, several James computers were unfortunately harmed. We lost two power supplies and one motherboard. Another power supply and motherboard were dead on arrival. My guess is that it's mostly bad capacitors. But nevertheless, this means that there will be another video up soon where I repair these machines. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, so you won't miss any of my upcoming content. And while you're down there, please drop a comment and tell me your best CPM related memory. And then I guess I see you out there in the dark corners of the interwebs. Thank you so much for the view. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more awesome retro content. If you wish to support this channel, you are very welcome to do so directly through Patreon or Tenor app, or by purchasing some of our merchandise. That helps a lot. Finally, you can also support us by simply watching a lot of our videos and by getting your friends to do the same.